Good day, YouTube. It is the 20th of February, 2021. This is my uh, 1988, I believe. Uh, it's a Club Car DS golf cart. It's a gas engine model with an 8-horse Kawasaki engine in it. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel um, for videos on this golf cart. Um, it was a you know very inexpensive, beat-up, barn find literally bought it at a at a farm um you know we had to you know obviously winch it on the trailer and we had to get it running we've done carburetor we've done electrical had parts missing and uh then i took the body off and did a lot of repairs on it, especially on the front it was really busted up i should have just replaced the cow but you know it's the challenge to repair it and make it work and did a rust-oleum paint job on it um what you don't know is after I painted the front and that turned out okay and then like the next day or a couple days later or something we did the rear um, what you don't know is after I painted it I was unable to carry the rear of this thing without dropping it damaging it you know the paint was still soft etc etc and uh, I went home with the intention to come out with some help um, and pack it in the shop that night and uh, one thing led to another and I forgot about it um, it didn't rain that night, but it the dew was very, very heavy, and the paint was far from dry. Um, and again, I put like five coats of paint on this thing with the idea I would show in a YouTube video how to uh, wet sand and polish um, a Rust-Oleum paint job to uh, you know a nice, nice finish. Well, it dewed really hard, and the paint really reacted especially everything that was uh horizontal you know the vertical stuff not too bad but the horizontal stuff the stuff where the dew really settled was just horrible and uh, so i off camera started wet sanding on this thing like the day after and uh i was making progress but i didn't let the paint cure long enough and uh, actually, you can see this here. Uh, my wife and I was kind of looking at it, and she kind of thought, you know, a stripe would be cool. So, like, the very next day, um, I masked this off and sprayed a black stripe on it. And it reacted with the paint something terrible because I didn't give it enough time to cure. So, um, that's when I started wet sanding on it and uh, realized that you got, I got to quit I gotta let this thing here um, because the paint was so thick, so heavy, and uh, it really, really needed to dry. So I went on to other projects. So this thing's been backburnered literally for months now, but um, it's time. I've got some time right now, so to uh, bring it back, I finished uh, working on the electric golf cart, which is a whole other set of videos on a '86 model club car, 36 volt electric, that I was fixing up for my father-in-law. Um, so it's time to get this one working too. Maybe we'll get them both out one of these days and uh, have some fun with them. So the video today is all about correcting the damage that I caused um, on my Rust-Oleum paint job on my uh, 88 club car. Um, so I'll bring you in a little closer. The, the extent of the damage has somewhat been sanded off. But uh, you can see if I get in here close how rough this is. And uh, you can still see that I have some wet sanding to go to get through uh, the damages here. In fact, this is still a little bit rough. Um, and I've actually pulled some paint off when I pulled the tape. So this is not going to be perfect. Uh, it's just not going to be. But that's okay, I can live with that. I might also try uh, some touch-up. We'll see how that works. So the fender flares um, have this wrinkly to them as well, which is you know what I found when I got here the next morning. Um, so I'm going to sand those just lightly. I, I don't care too much about these because they could have looked that way. I will be able to sand off that stripe, and I'm not going to put a stripe back on it. But the sides are actually still pretty good, so they don't need a lot of attention. Um, so, oh, this is a good example. That's what I had when I came back. This thing was just soaked, 
covered in dew, and uh, that's what I had to uh, come back to. So the back of this, um, I, I don't golf. This is going to be a utility cart for me. I might do this whole back area here and spray on bed liner, um, and we might do that yet today as well. So I have. Ooh, it's windy out. I have uh, wet sanded this. I uh, probably got a little more to do. Um, this area here, not so much. I haven't sanded it at all. And then we got to do this and we got to sand the stripe on. So we're going to start off with 500 grit wet and dry. Um, bucket of water with a little soap in it uh, makes it kind of nice. And uh, as soon as we get the stripe sanded off um, and get this down, uh, we'll switch from 500 to 1000 grit. Um, I'll do this lightly with 500 grit and then switch quickly to 1000 grit. Um, I'm not going to worry about the front of this. Um, it's actually still got some big holes there. This, I believe, was a uh, body off of an electric cart put onto a gas cart. So I actually, uh, I think I had to drill the hole or something for the forward reverse lever it was originally missing. Um, and I need to find some stuff to fill those holes with, and I'll find something. Um, not a big deal. Um, the front, however, it actually came out pretty good. Um, there's the typical orange peel and so forth. I will at least buff it out. Um, we may come back with a uh, thousand grit and uh, knock the uh, nubs off of it and then buff it out, or not. Remember, I, this is going to be a utility cart. People are going to borrow it. It's going to sit outside at events, and it's going to get dinged up. All right? I, I don't want to make it over nice. I don't want people to be scared to use it. Um, I don't want to be scared to use it. I'm not going to put a ton of effort into it. It's simply not worth it to me. Um, it is utility. But let me show you how far I am going to take it. And uh, you can take it farther than this, certainly. This is not as good as it can be. It's just as good as I'm going to take it. So I'm done with this side, pretty much. Um, you can still see it's got some surface scuffs and stuff in it. You can, uh, I'm just using a wool pad on a Harbor Freight uh, buffing machine. But, you know, I've got foam pads and you got finer and finer polishes. You can make this thing like, you know, a mirror perfect finish. Um, if you watch my videos when I painted this thing, however, you know I simply washed it with Comet and Scotch-Brite pads. We didn't do any repair on the body. There are still dings in it. Um, the back has still got these nasty things on it from hauling golf clubs or whatever. But the intent is to cut that out anyway and put taillights in it eventually, so I didn't even bother to fix that stuff. Again, utility. We're not putting this thing in shows. I didn't fill in the holes um, where there was a... Uh, soft top and all that jazz just running with it so this is probably nicer than it needs to be it's as nice as I'm going to make it over time as you you know wash it and um, polish it up a couple times a year or something it'll just get better and better and better so I put five coats on this thing we're gonna wet sand one or two of those off and polish off another half a layer or something leaving you know three coats or something a paint on it. I've had some questions in my video about painting this thing. You know, why do you put five coats on it? Well, my idea was to ha have a video to show you how to wet sand stuff a uh, rust oleum paint finish. And this is really some rust oleum I had. So I've got absolutely no dollars in the paint job. I'm using basically yard sale polishes and so forth. I'm not going to break into my new. Uh, buffing foam pads. Um, I'm not going to put any uh, money in the restoration of this paint at all. So it's uh, absolutely a free paint job, um, just my time, and it's absolutely a free restoration of said paint job. And uh, let's get started. So I'm going to get the uh, uh, sandpaper uh, ready, uh, see if uh, I've wore everything out or start over with some fresh sandpaper. Make sure you soak it out in water for a few minutes before you start. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll bring you back when I got something to show you. Okay, so 500 grit wet to dry. Let's 
go after this black stripe. I've got a rubber pad on it. Don't go after it without a rubber pad. Be digging holes. Caution around your corners and edges, right? You'll blow through those really quickly. But we're just trying to get the stripe off completely with 500 grit, and then we'll go to 1,000 grit um, after the stripe is gone. Working on the stubborn areas. on the floor, aren't we? Goes with the territory. That's why you don't do this in the living room. Paper falling off my pad. Alright, we got an area down here at the bottom of this curve we got to get out. Get real careful around the curves there. Just light, light, light. Get this area here in front. It's uh, it's actually pretty good. So this is going to be just a real light pass with 500 grit. We're just hitting the tops, of the orange peel, basically.
Okay. Why don't I uh, finish wet sanding all of this with the uh, 500. Um, we'll continue on this area and this area that I haven't touched yet. Then I'll bring you back when we switch over to uh, 1000 grit. And I definitely got issues where I pulled the tape there. We might do some touch up later. All right, we're done with the 500. Strike came off. I still have this issue right along this ridge where the tape pulled some paint off. It's not huge. We may or may not do anything about it. So here's styles and grit. Any uh, you know, little surface scratches left by the 500 is going to come off of this. Pulling this at a bend so I don't rub across that body line. I'm going to fiddle just a little more and uh, we'll get it dried up and we'll start uh, getting ready to polish this out. Alright, it's time to start the buffing process. Um, again, I'm using a Chicago electric buffing machine from Harbor Freight. Um, it has an electronic speed control. Um, and it's Seems to work okay. I'm not saying I'm um, completely sold on it, but we'll kind of see how long it lasts. I've wore out. I've thrown away at least six of these in my lifetime because they just wear out. Clean it up. Again, it's got a little digital speed control. That's as slow as it goes. I wish it went a little slower, um, but we're making do with that. Um, at Harbor Freight, you can get all the foam pads, which are 
the this cotton wool whatever it is pad um, is pretty aggressive and it's not going to leave a scratch free finish but it's going to be good enough for our purposes again I'm not going to spend any money on this thing it's just a utility cart it's just my time um, this is going to do a pretty good job uh, but you can take it to a whole nother level if you invest in you know wool pads um, and they get the foam pads and then you know Meguiar's makes a full series of buffing compounds this is a polishing compound um, that I just had um, I get I buy everything I have at yard sale so it's just something that I have it actually works pretty good so I would recommend their products but uh, um, yeah it's just something I had and that's what we're using um, some people put the product on the pad some put it on the body that's a personal preference thing. I like putting it here because I can keep sneaking up on it. So uh, we'll start with something uh, that you can see from the video um, in this area. And then we'll go from there. We're going to polish this out. We're going to get all the compound all over the place. We're going to go in every direction. And we're going to keep polishing until we have taken the polish back off the piece. Okay? We're going to be careful the edges. I already have issue with the edges because it pulled the paint uh, when I pulled this tape off when I painted that stripe on. Um, but you can go through an edge pretty quickly, so watch your edges. Okay, as slow as, as, slow as this will go.
Now, if you were trying to make a show rig out of this thing, this is the point where you would start going to your foam pads and go into less abrasive uh, polishes and so forth. Um, that's not where I'm headed. Um, this is a pretty nice finish. Now that I just put my fingerprints on it. Um, I'll be bringing it a little closer. And just understand this is a utility cart. So from here, I'm going to just take some uh, some polish, some no more junk polish that I have, and then some Mother's Carnuba Wax and wax that surface, which will take the residue from this other polish off. So this is what I was using. Um, there are others. I'm certainly not stuck on that. Um, I've got a cabinet over there just full of this stuff. Um, I say use it. Uh, I'm sure I paid 50 cents or something for that at a yard sale. And as you've seen my channel, you know I'm pretty cheap. So, again, this is where you would start going to the foam pads and go into less aggressive polishes and then waxes, and you could just keep making that old paint just shine, shine, shine. But when I load this thing up with a bunch of equipment and stuff, start hauling it across the fairgrounds or something somewhere, um, it's going to get beat and... Uh, I don't. I guess I don't really care. But you can see the shine to it. It's going to look good. It's very presentable. This was an old beater cart when I got it. I didn't even feel the holes and scratches and dings in it. We're just running with it. So it's very acceptable for uh, my needs. So let me uh, finish polishing this thing out, and uh, we'll get it to the wax stage here pretty soon. All right, it's wax time. So again, I'm used to using this uh, mother's. Carnuba Cleaner Wax. I like the cleaner wax because, you know, it's designed to take the junk off, not just wax it over and leave it there. I get these sponges at the dollar store in a stack of, I don't know, six or eight or something. And they work really good as applicators. When you're done, just chuck them, right? They're, they're pennies a piece. Um, and they work pretty good. You, If your wax is getting a little dry, you can put a little water in these. Um, helps get them going. But, uh, yeah. Now, every time we wax or polish this car, you know, they just get better and better and better. Obviously, I can spend the rest of the day and uh, make this thing great. I could go out and buy a hundred bucks worth of polishes and pads, and I mean, probably have it if I just would look. But I'm, it's not worth it to me. But your rig might be if you're doing a car, or truck, or motorcycle, and you might want it to really pop. Then you're not done yet. You got a ways to go. In fact, you're probably just getting started. But, for me, I'm about done. This body's just sitting here, by the way. It's not, it doesn't have one bolt in it. If you've seen it move around a little bit. Shouldn't take you too long to apply the wax. Circular motions. All right, let that dry to a haze. And uh, we'll use a microfiber towel to uh, wipe these off. And again, these are Harbor Freight microfiber towels. Um, the last sale they had was 69 cents for a package of four. Um, and I stocked up on them at that point. It was around Christmas. They were on sale for a couple months if you had the coupon. Um, I think they're buck 19 is the coupon right now. Um, and I keep watching, so 
If I uh, find them again at 69 cents for a package of four, I'll pick up a bunch. They work just fine, and we chuck them when we're done. I'll bring you back when that has dried to a haze. Wax off, grasshopper. Right. This area under the back seat thing I could use a little more work. But probably not gonna get it. Not from me anyway. Alright, I'll bring you in for a closer view. You could use a little more buff and we'll let it dry here for a little bit longer and hit it again. The old Rust-Oleum paint job. Um, and this is, a, again, this is probably halfway through a really good polish job, but uh, this is as good as we're going to do it, as I've said before. Um, there is a guy on uh, the Club Car Groups page on Facebook that is just absolutely horrified that someone would paint a golf cart using Rust-Oleum and uh, do a really cheap paint job, or should I say inexpensive paint job on a golf cart. So I pushed him for... Uh, you know, why would you have to spend money on it um, to get something that you're okay with? You know, everybody has different levels of what is acceptable. You know, some people don't like patina trucks. Um, I do. Um, some people don't like things that aren't perfect. Okay, knock yourself out. Spend $5,000 on a paint job on a golf cart if you want to. I didn't spend anything on this one, and it looks good. It looks fine. It's presentable, right? for what I want the golf cart for. I'm not putting it in golf cart shows or anything like that. I'm going to haul stuff. It's going with me, you know, with the step van at some big event that I'm doing sound for, and i got to haul stuff. The idea with this is I'm actually going to build a windshield tower and build off the seat supports and build a roof that will support uh, speakers and hold them without falling over. Um, so it's going to roll into an intersection of a big car show that's, you know, a downtown uh, car show on city streets. And uh, 
it's going to have four speakers on the roof and uh, provide sound for an intersection. Um, got a lot of ideas for it, but there's no reason to make it perfect. Um, kids are going to jump on it, and people are going to run into it with shopping carts and stuff like that. It is what it is. But it's very good. Um, I've shown you how to take it to this level. Um, I've told you how to take it to the next level and uh, knock yourself out with your project. So, gang, I appreciate you watching the videos. Um, appreciate it if you watch another one while you're here. Give me a thumbs up on the way out the door. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you on the next one.